Apple has just released macOS 26, also known as macOS Tahoe, to the public. It's a big update this year, but most of the changes beyond the new look are quality of life improvements. I've covered the update in detail in other videos on the channel, so check those out if you're interested. In this video, though, I want to focus specifically on the settings that you should change and configure straight away in macOS Tahoe so you get the best possible experience right from day one. Okay, let's get into it. Let's start with the updated look to macOS, which Apple is calling Liquid Glass. It's a pretty major change, and there are a few settings that you'll want to explore to get it looking the way you prefer. If you go into System Settings and then choose Appearance from the sidebar on the left, you'll notice some significant differences from the previous Appearance menu. What used to be known as Accent Color is now called Theme, although it works much the same way. The main new addition is the icon and widget style option directly underneath. You can choose the default style you're used to, or you can opt for dark or clear. If you choose dark, you can set it to automatic, where the icons on your Mac will be in normal color during the day and dark at night, or always dark. Choosing clear gives you a transparent effect, which is definitely an acquired taste. Tinted is the option that I think people will have the most fun experimenting with. When you choose tinted, you can then pick from any of the colors in the theme section, and you can also apply the same to icon, widget, and folder colors. Combining this with certain wallpapers can create some really striking effects. On my Mac running the beta, I've been using a black and red wallpaper with an orange tint, and I think it looks great. There's also a setting called tint window background with wallpaper color. If you enable this, your Mac will try to tint the backgrounds of your windows to match the color of your wallpaper. It's a subtle effect, but it looks really polished. This menu is well worth exploring if you want to customize your Mac's appearance. The liquid glass look of macOS 26 is undeniably a major change from previous versions, and if the comments on some of my previous videos are anything to go by, it is very much a love it or hate it type of change. One setting you should definitely know about is the ability to reduce transparency, making the liquid glass effect much easier to see. To access it, open System Settings, choose Accessibility from the sidebar on the left, then choose Display. In here, you'll see an option called Reduce Transparency. Click that, and you'll notice the liquid glass effect in places like the dock, the menu bar at the top of the screen, and Control Center will be significantly less transparent, making it much easier to see what you're doing. By the way, do you ever watch tips and tricks videos like this and think, how am I supposed to remember all of this? If that sounds like you, you should definitely check out Mac Essentials Plus, my dedicated training portal for the Mac. Inside, you'll find modules, each one covering a different part of the Mac system. Within each module, there are lessons, and each lesson includes a short video showing you exactly what to do, a step-by-step -step written guide complete with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. Right now, there are more than 200 lessons, with new content being added all the time. You can work through them in order or use the search feature to jump straight to what you need. There are no ads, no sponsors, just content. And it's all available for a single payment with no recurring fees. That one payment also includes all future updates, including the new macOS 26 update that I'm rolling out now. So whether you're on the latest version of macOS or an older one, the content has you covered. And if you have an iPhone, you might also be interested in iPhone Essentials Plus, my dedicated iPhone training portal. You can buy either one separately or bundle them together for the best price. If that sounds good, scan the QR code on screen or check out the link in the description or the pinned comment. As part of the visual overhaul in macOS 26, the menu bar at the top of your screen is now transparent. I personally like it, but I can see why some people might not. While there is a general transparency setting, that you can apply across the whole Mac, you might prefer to just change this one element. To do that, go to System Settings, choose Menu Bar from the sidebar on the left, and enable Show Menu Bar Background. This will add a solid background behind the menu bar. There's a brand new feature in macOS 26 that lets you customize the look and feel of folders in Finder. If you navigate to any folder, and right click on it, you'll now see an option called Customize Folder, which didn't exist in the previous macOS. Clicking into this gives you a set of color options along the top, and below that, a choice of icons split into categories like people, animals and nature, food and drink, and activity. If you'd prefer, you can also click on Emoji in the bottom right, which opens the full emoji menu. Just pick the one that you want, and it will be applied to your folder. And if you don't want to have to set the folder color each time, 
you can change the color of the folders on a system-wide level. Head into Settings, choose Appearance from the sidebar, and click into the drop-down menu for folder color. Set your preferred color here, allowing you to finally get away from blue. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, you should definitely check out The Proper Weekly. It's my free weekly newsletter that lands in your inbox every Friday, packed with tech news from the week, content I've been enjoying, and a handy tip for the Apple ecosystem. Just scan the QR code on screen to sign up or follow the link in the description. Mac OS 26 lets you change the appearance of the clock on your lock screen, but the setting isn't where you'd expect it to be. I thought it would be in the lock screen section of system settings, but it isn't. Open system settings and choose wallpaper from the sidebar on the left. In the top right corner, you'll see an option called clock appearance. Click on this and you can choose whether the clock shows on the lock screen on both the screensaver and lock screen, or never. If you leave the clock enabled, you can then pick from six different clock fonts and adjust the weight using the slider underneath. It gives you a nice way to personalize the look of your lock screen to your taste. Spotlight Search on the Mac has had one of the biggest glow ups this year. I've got a full video coming later this week all about Spotlight Search, so keep an eye on the channel if you'd like to see that. But with the added power of Spotlight comes the need to think about which areas of your Mac you actually want Spotlight to access. If you give it access to everything, you might find the results are sometimes too broad. And if there are areas that you know you're never going to use, it might make sense to stop Spotlight from looking there. Here's what I mean. Go to Settings, then choose Spotlight from the sidebar on the left. Scroll down to the Results from App section. Everything that you see enabled here could potentially show up when you search. So if you type in the word contract, you might see documents or folders that match because those are included in the results from system section. But you could also see app store results for apps with contract in the name, journal entries that mention it, or even messages. Spotlight usually does a good job of pushing the most important stuff to the top. But if you find your results are getting cluttered, this is the place to tidy things up. Just uncheck anything that you don't need. For example, you might know right away that you'll never want the Games app showing up in Spotlight, or maybe you don't want dictionary definitions for every search. You can disable both of those. I wouldn't go too crazy with this page because Spotlight is generally really good at surfacing the most relevant results, but it is worth knowing the option is here if your searches start to feel cluttered. It's also worth taking a moment to set up some Spotlight actions. I'll be covering this in much more detail in my Spotlight video in a couple of days, but let me give you a couple of quick examples here. When you open Spotlight in macOS, press Command and 3 to switch to Actions. Everything in this list is an action that you can assign a quick key to. For example, I've set one up to start a conversation with ChatGPT. I added the word chat as my quick key. To do that, you just click on Add Quick Keys next to the action that you want, type in the word or phrase that you'd like to use, and hit Return. Now the next time I open Spotlight, I don't have to go into Actions, I can just type Chat and press Return, and it will launch a ChatGPT conversation straight away. But you can go even further with the Shortcuts app. One of the built-in Spotlight actions is Start Timer, but the problem is it then asks you how long the timer should be before it actually starts. If you use something like the Pomodoro method, where you divide your working day into 25-minute sessions, you don't want to have to keep setting that manually. So here's how to fix that. Open the Shortcuts app on your Mac and click the plus button to create a new shortcut. On the right hand side, go to the app section, choose clock and drag start timer into the shortcut body. Change the number to 25, then click on the name at the top and rename it Pomodoro. Now go back into Spotlight. Press Command and 3 to go to Actions and search for Pomodoro. You'll see your new shortcut. Tap Add Quick Keys, type in P-O-M-O, -O, and hit Return. From now on, whenever you want to start a Pomodoro session, just open Spotlight, type P-O-M-O, -O, and hit Return. Your 25-minute timer will start instantly. Something that's definitely worth doing is taking a little time to create a custom power user control center that's set up just for you. One of the new features in macOS is the ability to completely customize your control center. Click on it in the menu bar at the top of your screen and you'll see an edit controls button down at the bottom. But before you tap that, I would recommend looking through what you already have in control center 
and deciding if there's anything that you never use. If there is, you can get rid of it. Removing something from Control Center doesn't remove the feature from your Mac, it just means it won't show here. For example, I don't really use the sound options in Control Center, so I'd right click on that and choose Remove, or you could make it smaller if you wanted. Once you've cleared out anything you don't use, click Edit Controls. This is where you can work your way through all of the available functions and add the ones that matter to you. Keep in mind, there's only so much space, but if you go beyond that, your Mac will automatically create a second page of Control Center. You can switch to it anytime by pressing the plus button at the top. You can really customize this to work how you want. Just remember the minus button removes something. You can drag items around to reorder them. And if you right click, you can change the size of a widget or remove it completely. If you use the Apple Music app on your Mac while you're working, there's a new feature that you should try called Auto Mix. To turn it on, open Apple Music and go to Settings. You can do this by choosing Music in the menu bar and then Settings, or just press Command and the comma key as a shortcut. In Settings, click on Playback at the top, tick the box for Song Transitions, and then change the transition style from Crossfade to Auto Mix. Crossfade has been around for a while. It works by fading the volume of one song down while fading the next one up. It can make listening to a playlist more enjoyable, but if you're mixing different genres with very different BPMs, it can sometimes sound a bit messy. Automix uses AI to handle this more like a DJ would. It speeds up or slows down the song slightly during the transition to create a smoother mix. It isn't magic and it won't always be perfect, but in my experience, as long as you're listening to music in a similar genre, it does a really good job. Some of the transitions are surprisingly good, definitely worth trying out to see if you're a fan. It is definitely worth taking a few minutes to configure your Photos app because Apple has made it much easier to get the Photos app on the Mac looking and working the way that you want, especially when it comes to collections. When you open the app now, the sidebar is split into sections. You've got your library, your collections, your albums, any shared content, your media types, utilities, and projects. And right at the top, there's a pinned section, which is really useful. What I'd recommend is going through everything in the sidebar and pinning the items you use the most, whether that's shared albums, specific media types like videos, selfies, or screenshots. Just right click on anything that you want quick access to and choose pin. It will appear at the top in the pin section and you can drag items around to reorder them however you like. Over time, this pin section can become the part of the Photos app that you use the most because it's where you can put everything that you really care about. If you change your mind later, just right click and choose unpin. In the collection section itself, tap the ellipsis menu at the top of the screen and choose reorder. From here, you can drag the items into whatever order makes the most sense for you. You can't remove anything in macOS 26, but you can prioritize what matters by moving it up and push less useful items down to the bottom. Back in the collections view, you'll also notice little arrows to the right of each section. If the arrow is pointing down, that section is expanded. Click it to collapse the view. You can do this across the whole page, collapsing the things that you don't care about while leaving the ones you do expanded. It is a simple but really effective way of managing the app and making it a much more enjoyable experience to use. So there you go, that was 10 settings that I think you should configure on the Mac straight away when you download and install macOS Tahoe. What do you think? Are there any settings that you would have included that I didn't mention here? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.